Hey guys, Tarp here bringing you a 2v2 today. We are on Crossing in the Woods. Playing today spawning in the South Wales Vodka Company. Playing as the Brits and his loadout is Mobile Assault. Royal Engineers. And Commandos. Teaming up with him is C. Blanco. Playing as Soviets who has mechanized support. Shock Rifle Frontline. And Shock Motor Heavy. Face off against them, we have Dirty Finisher playing as OKW, immediately locking into Luftwaffe Ground Forces and Vicky Kyle playing as OKW, who has Overwatch, Special Operations, and Breakthrough. Just a bit of combat here, Stumpire is waiting behind the building, jumping in, harassing the conscripts, trying to come through for the capture, but not chasing past this point. Leave the uh, Fox Trinities behind light cover to finish the job. No, it tries to back away and put down the sandbags. Seems like I'm not allowing him. In terms of ranking, so uh, allies range team around rank 20 versus Axis range team, I think. Uh, do finish around rank 30 and Cal around rank 10. Okay, see so Blanco going for a Maxim build here. We've seen two Maxims be pretty effective on this map in the past in tournament play. Very hard to outmaneuver two machine guns on one half of the map. Stumpire is coming in to the side of the building with only one window trying to flush the squad out. And Volker Company going for a three Tommy build. Oh but he's getting blasted in this building jumping out now right next to Stumpire is getting quite low. And has sent a couple of squads over to the other side to assist his teammate. Now getting flushed out. Going for a pretty standard build. Three sections into the Universal Carrier. Probably going to be upgunning that as well. And especially up against the Kugelwagen. Be quite powerful. Was trying to plant a mine here by getting interrupted by the UC. But the UC takes a bucket load of damage from Sturmpyros. Despite only being in front of them for a brief moment. Oh, coming in for a wipe here on the retreating squad. There's the Universal Carrier. And he chases uh, in the way. Oh, 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 speeding down the road. A little bit too fast. The Universal Carrier wasn't on the road. So, uh, Kubel gets out of there. Close call for both sides. Bit of pushing here from the Universal Carrier while the Tommies soften up the squad. We've got the Stumpires coming in from the side. Machine gun trying to set up. Stumpires trying to get the flank off and Senior Grenade to force away that squad. Machine gun can't quite get the suppression on in time. Now repositioning behind the heavy cover. Stumpires a little bit slow to chase. Can they get around the side again? Looks like they might be able to. No, they could just staying right, at, right in front. And that allows the machine gun to pin them very, very quickly. Could even get the wipe here on retreat. Oh, and this time, Cal not so lucky. Sturmpies go down, and that's really bad news for him because he needed those to repair up his coup wagon as well. So a little bit careless. Didn't continue to chase around the side of Maxim there, and he ends up paying for it dearly, losing the Sturm Pioneers. Now uh, Fox Trinity in a bit of trouble as well. UC upgraded. But the Vic is chasing him, but doesn't get the kill. Conscripts. Closing in. Stim is coming down the avenue. Uh, looking for a flank on this machine gun. It's continuing to backpedal, though. Backing itself into this corner here. Stim is a set up kind of in heavy cover, but probably not... In the direction of the machine gun getting suppressed and in comes the flamer now see blanco pushing back strongly and needs to because guys have had a very poor control on that side of the map but we're reading that situation now that cal has you know suffered so many losses in his doom pose and kuwagan being out of action for so long rocket company finally pushing out oh boy stern is going down over here for dirty finisher so a couple wipes here for the axis after a you know, strong period of map control early on, they maybe are losing their grasp on the game. He's chasing down the UC looking for the kill, but couldn't get it. 
abandon that. And uh, fourth infantry section for vodka company, and now we're going for an anti tank gun. We do have a battle group down for Cal. In fact, double battle groups. Oh man, that's really bad news on a map like Crossing in the Woods. Everybody knows this is the uh, breeding ground for walking stukas. So access not having those is going to hurt them, maybe not immediately, but certainly once we pass the uh, 30 minute mark. Some decent damage. We have our one infantry support gun out, and it's been doing some pretty good work. Two kills so far. This is kind of what you want your machine guns getting spotted by a unit inside the building. Now, your infantry support gun gets shot off very, very easily. And I could even see him maybe going for like <laughs> an IR searchlight. Crazy as it sounds, It'd be really, really helpful against a mass team we can play from C Blank. I'll allow infantry support guns to redo their work. But first, it's going to go for a second infantry support gun. Kubel playing a dangerous game here. Chasing forwards, forces back the Maxim, but now right in front of the Zis. Could go down here, trying to back away. He gets out of there in the nick of time. Double stern pies on top of the Zis, now pressuring, but. There's a carry coming through the center with the suppression. To shut them down. But look at the pushback from the allies. They're in such a dominant map control situation now. Off those early wipes from the Axis. And the Axis are kind of investing into some very slow units. You know, it'll take a long time for them to uh, pay back those infantry support guns. So in the meantime, they are hurting for map control. Kind of lucky that the allies haven't further invested into light vehicles right now. Because they will be getting blasted. Neither of them, I think, has a Raketan. They are wide open to some light vehicle play. But yeah, Vodka Company, uh, you know, especially C. Blanco, has not put down his tier 3, so no T70, and has invested very heavily into infantry, so we're not likely to see a T70. To maybe some fast tier 4, fast Katusha, especially in response to these mass infantry support guns, could be a good option. A triple cap at the moment, Axis need to get something going here. Those are going to drain out very, very quickly. Tier 4 going down for Cal. Truck out for Dirty Finisher, just about ready to put down his tech as well. Okay, okay, should be alright. Bit of a close call for C. Blanco's combat engineers though. Stays in cover to soak the grenade. Two support guns getting some good hits though, guards are low now. I put up some sandbags to assist with the capture, but unable to do so that you see locking him out. Has got too many kills with it though, only two, but it's been very good for control and comes forward just to complete the capture on the center to relieve a little bit of that VP pressure so they're not getting triple capped anymore. Got an AT gun out for Volker Company and now going for the sniper has also opted for the bolster five man upgrade. Ooh. Squad's quite low here, Sturmpies and Falks into the retreat. And they gotta go across the river as well, this could be trouble. Enemy causing trouble. Squad Try at the front looking very, very points. low with two models. Trying to run and gun. Wow, very, very close call for Volker Company, quite lucky to get away with that one. It. Okay, flak base out for duty finish in a slightly forced position here. We'll try and allow the uh, support guns a little bit more safe real estate to fire from. Slightly further forwards. Reducing the shell travel time and the scatter.
Let's see if it kills on that infantry support gun. Two on the other. They're doing all right. And this is where the uh, ah search like can really come in handy. Just constantly spotting these ball weapons from long range. into the building squad takes quite a lot of damage but coming around the side now and all these team weapons quite low from C Blanco they're taking a lot of damage from those infantry support guns let's knock around the front here let's have a uh, couple mines to assist defending it it's taking a little bit of fire from the fox yeah what a suppression burst and now it runs over the mine full retreat from cow as well but doesn't get wiped We're losing a capture point. yeah Axis have been doing it tough these last few minutes trying to cap in the center again but once again the universal carry causing some issues comes forward to this little bit of heavy cover out the front to at least get the neutralizer on here comes a raketon setting up long range oh and it hits the ground universal carry gets out of there so it's coming in from the side now these infantry support guns are reasonably well defended though by the flak base. Oh, in close range these infantry support guns can be pretty nasty. Snap coming through the middle. Oh, good shot from the ISG. Over here, these ones are doing some big work as well sides of the map. Go up to 11 kills now. Both these squads very, very low. And, uh, forcing a few retreats. So even if they're not getting the kills, they are causing a lot of health damage. Which is sometimes a bit of an issue for Soviets having so uh, many models on these squads. To heal up and only three minutes to do so. Was a bit of a traffic jam at the mid bay. But the Axis did get control of two VPs, so at least uh, relieving a bit of VP pressure. But maybe not for too long. Cromwell in the works for Volker Company. A little bit late though. We got this a bit earlier, maybe if you skip the sniper. on the universal carrier. I think it's pretty lucky. Doesn't need to get repaired up as a result of that. Okay, we've got tier 4 tech going up for C Blanco now. And yeah, he's been bleeding a decent chunk. Take a look at his KD. Just why he hasn't been able to afford any uh, vehicles so far and why his tech's a bit delayed, just hurting for manpower. I'm well, trying to close the distance, looking for the snare, but don't manage to get in range. Two support guns softening up these squads. Be yeah, all these team weapons for the Axis become a bit of a liability for C Blanco if he chooses to go against C Blanco rather if he chooses to go for that Kachusha and because the Axis have had uh, so little fuel control to this point you can see they're both about 40 fuel away from medium with no high fuel under the control right now maybe he can get away with it especially with a few mines to defend the uh, Kachusha could be nasty and it is going to be need to be him building the rocket artillery because I suppose Vodka Company could go for mobile assault. But yeah, Petrus is much better than the land mattress in my opinion. It's aggressive sniper play here. Kitten trying to return fire. 
You know, anti-tank guns uh, do have a modifier against infantry. They only hit for quarter damage if they land, I believe it is. So a direct hit's not going to kill a sniper anyway. Oof, speaking of direct hits, it looked like that Raketon went right through the middle of that universal carrier. That thing <laughs> hasn't even been hit by an anti-tank gun once. It's having a very good run. Pushing forwards here. And yeah, it's going to be the Katusha first for C. Blanco, but you can see he is really struggling for manpower. Even after building the Katusha, he's still got a huge fuel bank. Yeah, manpower, big issue. These team weapons are somewhat spread out, but still going to take a uh, big blast from Katusha, I imagine. Double Rakitans on both of the Axis players, so they are reasonably well defended against these uh, medium tanks, such as the Cromwell. Going through the centre now. Ben's equipped for Vodka Company as well. Double Rakitans forcing back the Cromwell. This Rakitan is in big jeopardy. Those Bren's doing big work. Getting the D crew, in comes some support, throwing out a gammon bomb. Oh, and it connects squad down. The other squad took heavy casualties as well. Enemy got one of our squads. Oh, what died up? Infantry section died somewhere? Over here? Might have been. A capture point is being overrun. That does mean that we've got Hammer for Vodka Company. And we got Katusha on the front lines. Infantry support guns have pulled quite far back though. I wonder if they saw the Katusha. Looks like he's maybe going to go for a barrage in the center. Yep. Ooh, and connecting with the Rakitin. Oh, man! Oh, that's a bit of bad luck. Stumpire's going down. Rakitin does get out of the air, only just. Was that a Cromwell shot that got the kill on the Stumpires, though? Only sees three kills on the, uh, the Chucha. bit of damage but still safe. Mark V echo activated on the Panzer IV as soon as it appeared. Playing a bit of time. Panzer IV on the other side though doing some damage. Do we have an AT gun rotating across that way? Cromwell reasonably healthy can also join in on the fun. And the uh, Rakitans for Cal are out back at base so Panzer IV has to play in a conservative fashion, so he doesn't have the support for it right now. Sniper doing some capping, Panzer IV coming forwards. Cal has locked into Overwatch by the way. And uh, as we saw before, mechanized support for C. Blanco. Almost a mandatory pick on this map. Makes you 152 so strong. And Stumpire's getting out of there though. The Cromwell dueling with the P4, but coming out worse off. AT gun pushing up behind this though. Cal's Rakitin still back at base, requiring uh, reinforcements, still not quite back up to full. On the flank. Oh, but there's an SU 85 for C Blanco not hanging around for the ICU 152. That's going to make life very, very hard for this Panzer IV. Sweeping away all these mines as well. It's a good combination uh, of troops for C. Blanco. Pushing 
if he's charging forwards. But yeah, I mean, Maxim, guards, suffering a lot of bleed there for not many results. So uh, Dirty Finisher's got a tough path on his side of the map. Oh boy, and there's a Comet. So it's not much easier on Cal's side of the map either. Just in some trouble here. and forcing away a couple of troops as if we're dueling with the Comet. Volshimega dropped in the rear doing some big damage to the Katusha but he's managed to kill it. Maxim switching directions. Volshimega come forwards and they get the grenade off before being forced to retreat. Other squad of Volshimega looking for the D crew here. Here come the British tanks. But Double Kittens are there. Cromwell one shot from death. Panzer IV chasing in looking for the kill. Double Kittens through the center. Panzer IV bounces but the Rakittens finish the job. Katusha targeting the Rakittens. They're on the retreat now. A couple kills but uh, no white. Just to recrew the uh, lost Rakitten though. I mean uh, Maxim. It's not the end of the world. push on the far side from Cal but not amounting to much having a bit of trouble with those fox now they're up against the uh, infantry sections with the Brens of course he's got to contend with the UC and the sniper as well so it's tough for Cal tough for the Axis in general at the moment but nice pick off taking down the Cromwell exactly what they needed to uh Get things going here. That's what's kind of got, got to come down to them. You know, some enterprising raquette and play to help turn things around, I think. Oh, guards in some trouble. Now, we're going to take a snare here. Watch trying to come through the center. It takes a uh, temporary crit from the sniper, slowing things down. A T gun from the side trying to open up on the Panzer IV. Yeah, misses both its shots though. Second one might have been an attack round, however. Okay, we've got the big bombs loaded for Vodka Company. Looks like he's saving up for another Comet. Oh, Rakitin charging all the way forwards, finds the Kachusha and gets the kill. And that's what I was talking about, some enterprising Rakitin play. And now the Axis are right back in the match. Take a look at army sizes, you can see they're actually ahead right now. See Blanco having lost his uh, conscripts. Force with 152 though, and that's a big connection. It's going to connect, but it's not enough for engine damage. Come through a kit to support the Panzer IV. He's popped the marked vehicle on the Panzer IV. The kit and keeping it safe. 152 from long range, forcing the retreat. Try and charge in with the low health Zest, a little bit risky. Oh, Comets. Going in after the Panzer IV. Oh, gets the wipe on the retreating squad. We'll call that good enough. Axis are down by around 200 VPs. But yeah, I feel like they have stabilized in terms of uh, army compositions now. Maybe even slightly hit after the kill of that Katusha. And that Katusha was such a big threat, you know, they're so reliant on these team weapons. Taking that down basically for free, man. Huge feather in the account. Capture through the center. 152 standing watch. Comet nearby as well. Also taking some big damage though. It's a D crew on one of the infantry spore guns with the Maxim. Double kittens are there for the Comet. Damage. 
152 switching across to these squads, it looks like. And they're getting bouncing. We didn't get the wipe, he's coming forwards, trying to stay in range. Oh, and he does get the D crew. It's a pretty defensive position though, going to be hard to kill it from here. Bouncing there. It's already five out the back getting repaired, so can't assist right now. And this was an opportunity maybe for one of those raquettes to push forwards while 152 was shooting HE shots at the Panzer IV, but didn't choose to do that. Focusing on the T Rippers in the center. Getting there again though. Double tins there, in fact. Didn't see that one back there. Basically the exact same positions. And they do quite a lot of damage to the Comet. Needs repairs again. Like Groundhog Day. I fly out now for Volca Company. I thought maybe he's going to go for the second Comet, but no. Go for the uh, Tank Destroyer instead. I'm going to see a Panther for Dirty Finisher. Keller not pulling the trigger on anything has gone for the mechanized truck so maybe gonna go for the King Tiger Getting pretty close to being able to call in the sector assault and dirty finisher also with airborne assault locked and loaded so could be seeing some planes in the near future and the allies are not prepared for it see Blanco is so strapped for manpower He's been out of a quad, but you know, has seen the Foshimega on his side of the map. Maybe seen the Jaeger lights on the other. So should be, uh, you know, at least somewhat aware that they're going to be up against some big time off map squad down in the center. Fire Fly pushing forwards in support of this infantry blob. Just out of range of the Panzer IV back there, though. Coming forwards now. Shots of the Panzer IV. The Rio runs into the flak base, dropping the airborne assault in quite a defensive position, in fact. Interesting. Is there maybe worry about this truck getting pushed down? They're quite defensive and very easy for the allies to avoid that. Yeah, I'm not a fan of that placement, but alright. Next is on the drain again. And they're coming through, going for the ICU 152, but the Zis was there camouflaged. Double kittens coming through as well. Some shots. Now on the retreat. The mine vehicle on that Panther as well, by the way. Coming from, coming from the side. And the uh, Rakitin that got left forwards got decrewed. I'm surprised he didn't retreat both of them just before. Shooting fire coming forwards. Looking for the Panzer IV. Oh, connects. Briefly stops though. Might not be in range for the next one. We've got the big bombing run and no, he does connect with the Panzer IV. The Air Supremacy coming through on the HQ as well. This could be trouble for Dirty Finisher. Got a lot of support weapons around here as well. We've got the planes on the other side. The Sector Assault trying to go in for the kill on the truck and he gets it. A little bit of follow-up from the SU-85 squad down as well. And that is a big blow against the Axis. Oh, but the 152 through the center, very low. I think he still needs two shots. Maybe not after the infantry support gun connected just then. Going to take a Faust. Don't know if a Faust is going to be enough. Oh, now getting suppressed and doesn't even get the Faust off. 152 is still very low. But it sounds like the planes have been uh, shot down. So no more anti-tank planes for Cal. I don't know how that happened. Must have been just like really good RNG the machine gun from the 152. Let's walk 
Chris Duca. Looks so decent. Let's take a look at him here. He's got two vehicles destroyed, so maybe kill one. I'm pretty sure I saw him uh, take down one from the earlier evil assault. I don't know what happened to the second one. Tommy's pushing forwards again. Next him over here, D Cruise. the wipe on the Falshi Mega. We've got some craters here providing a bit of light cover on the retreat. So they do make it home safe. Wow, another SU-85 for C. Blanco. Interesting. Any heavy investment into, into tank? But I mean, if there's something here's a Panther, those SU-85s will knock it down very, very quickly. Speaking of, SU-85 coming through the center. Do you have double kittens right there, though? Bring out the Gammon Bomb. It's out there in time, but the SU-85 one shot from Death Panther also in the uh, scene, but that vehicle he doesn't want to chase and doesn't want to risk the Panther after losing his HQ. Speaking of HQ, he's putting down the Mechanized Regiment now. So maybe he's going to go for the King Tiger next, but it's still a long way away from that. Or maybe another walking Stukas still. A decent option. So the kitten got finished off. Nexus are doing a good job of keeping the points uh, at least neutralized. Haven't drained out too many VPs. through the center though. Start to come towards the site them. Oh no, walking Stuka. All the rockets into the trees. Big shot from the 152. Both the Rakitans have to get out of there. Cal making a big blunder there. Can't be too close to the trees or your rocket artillery will connect with them. Call that one the Von Ivan Special. <laughs> you did like three or four times in one tournament match. Oh, and there we go. Kitten D crew just like that. And that was dude finished his last for kitten. No one needs that in support of his Panther. Coming forward to E35 looking for the kill, but manages to recruit. it. Oh, but maybe 152 has something to say about it. Grenades. We'll waste some munitions there. Try and come in with the uh, Jaeger lights on uh, Camo. Trying to go for the capture, but they took some uh, collateral damage from that 152, which is just doing such nasty damage. Pretty sure one of these players did have breakthrough, right? Go for the Jaeger Tiger, but that's again shunned. Okay, Comet isolated on the side. He drops airborne assault, but it does take a while for the anti-tank planes to come through, so I think the Comet should be able to get out of there. And now maybe the Panther's in some trouble. Took the bus and WS-285 is doing some big damage. Panther decides to disengage. Kind of have to account for those anti-tank planes coming in quite late and dropping this. You can't drop it like other anti-tank uh, noises. The anti infantry pass first and then the anti tank planes after that. They're gonna want just then. Maybe the killer is this with it? I'm not sure. So, yeah, that uh, did not end up being a terribly good usage of their ability. I think the best would be and plant it like quite deep into allied territory close to where the ISU-152 is it's one of the uh, less mobile tanks on the side of the allies kind of like the, the heart of your uh, offense at the moment well, it's 
really frustrating to watch. Kitten and Panther pushing on the 152, getting some good damage in. Do have double Easter 85s nearby. Switching directions, but everything connecting on the 152 here. Pops them up, vehicle. Panther decides to disengage. DPS from those double Easter 85 mark vehicles is too scary for the Panther to continue to chase, but maybe that was a time where you know could have dropped the airborne assault around here. Continue the chase. Might have lost the Panther in the process, but. Two. Don't have the munitions for it this time. Oh, yeah, Maxim goes down. Let's see where go. Yeah, comes in now for Cal. He's got off to such a horrible start with that walking Stuka. There's two barrages connecting with the trees. But who's committed to using the Egg Lights? So mainly as a camouflage squad. Bit of a recon intel, maybe. Going for an ambush on the sniper. How did the sniper even see him just then? Maybe the marked vehicle plane revealed them. I think it does as well, right? Those camouflage units, which I don't think it should, but. Whatever. Here's going on both sides. Look at that. Three comm engineers, two royal engineers. <laughs> that is some very fast repair types. Force away, but at least didn't take any manpower bleed there. And this still doesn't have the machine gun upgrade, by the way. Maybe understand that if you've got like a strong off map than the airborne assault, but I don't really rate uh, airborne assault that highly. Definitely would be upgrading the Panther with a machine gun. And we did CC Blanco go for a quad now. So he's gonna have the next off map pretty well handled. For blitzing out. I think that's a good use of the blitz. Guaranteeing the Panzer IV can get out of there safely. Once again, the Axe is really struggling for the VP control. Have to get forced off. And uh, Allies looking for the triple cap. Munitions cash is going down for Vodka Company. Th three of them now. We gotta spam his off map. Same story for C Blanco. Continue to spam the Mark vehicle as soon as his tanks get in trouble. He really wants to get them neutralized, but my costume is squad. Oh, big damage all at once on the Jagdpanzer. Got the critical shot with the sniper as well. Stunning it, but Jagdpanzer is still alive somehow. Still alive somehow. Backing away now. And that is a miracle. It somehow survived there. Number of kittens forcing back the British tanks. Panther coming into the rescue. Oh, going to get an engine critical. Taking some raketin shots from the side. Panther not chasing in for the kill though. Kitten's coming forwards. Maybe we get a little bit more damage in. I'm sure you just have to give up the chase. This Rakitten didn't come forwards, it's on camouflage. Have to take it out of camouflage to move it forwards. Rakitten through the center, putting pressure on the SU 85s. They're both one shot from death. This could be a big moment for the Axis. They can come in here with some big damage. All the Allied tanks are very, very low now. Coming down, ooh! A bit of damage to the tanks and to the repairing squads. And the 152 stopped backing away. Double Kitten's coming through. Oh, and they take down the 152. Big mistake from C. Blanco stopping there for a second. 
and he loses the 152 that is a big cost and man Carol got so lucky escaping with that Jagdpanzer I went like four or five shots miss on it there crazy stuff got away a pixel of health too Panzer IV giving some good work done while all the allied tanks are forced off. Taking down the cash while they're at it. They did cash up ev basically every point on their side of the map, the allies. Our capture point. They're trying to take it. Rocket. It's only one can mix though. Pop and smoke to cover the retreat. Oh my god, really good attack round there from Cal. Almost got the kill. Bouncing off the comet though. Lucky break for Vodka Company. Okay, Vet 3 SUA 5 coming forward. Jagdpanzer on cautious movement. Coming out of camo now. He's chasing in. Finds the Firefly. Firefly with Tura Rockets on cooldown. Can't do anything about it here. Going for the kill on the Firefly. Now backing away, but could be his undoing. Panzer in trouble. He's ready five chasing in. It's one more shot to get the kill. Oh, maybe not though. Vets up. Oh no, but the extra damage from the sniper from the side. Make sure it goes down. Pain's coming in. Shot down by the quads. Oh, and that's enough damage. Really lucky scatter from the uh, anti-tank planes to get the kill there. They did more damage than usual, I'd say. But yeah, the saw the Jagdpanzer vet up. That's where it vet two is when it gets bonus health. So, so I think it might have survived one more shot from the ready 5 But then the sniper chipping in for that bonus bit of damage made the difference there. Crazy sequence of events. Alpha charging forwards, but he's ready 5 there to meet him. They did drop the airborne assault quite deep into Allied territory though. Might be able to get one pass off here. Comes in to tank plane now. Oh, it doesn't shoot down on that pass. Here they come through again. Shoot down one. Shoot down the other. But they did buy the uh, access quite a lot of breathing room. Got a lot of capping done behind that. They are down to 54 VP, so there's a little bit of a. Uh, trouble take a look at army sizes we can see the axis are ahead now see Blanco trying to save up for their ISU 152 replacement a little bit behind an army size Rock company still with a decent bank though maybe squeeze one more unit into his composition Something like a Cromwell. Be possible. Oh, big shot from the infantry support guns. And yeah, the team weapons from the Axis, uh, you know, still showing their strength in the late game without the Katusha to counter them. Losing that Katusha turning out to be a huge deal this game. Being able to afford to rebuild it. I suppose he could have put that instead of the second uh, SU 85, but the second SU 85 made sense. Stu coming through. Jackson could be in some trouble. Sideways Barrage does get out of there though. This one taking some casualties. Get two on the walking Stuka, that's when it's get, got uh, both of the cooldown bonuses now, so it's a pretty big deal and uh, is indeed the King Tiger for Dirty Finisher. Also hasn't upgraded that with the machine gun yet. That's coming out of camo, dodging the grenade. Some setting up. It's really five going forwards for the Panzer IV. Raketten is there, not quite facing the right direction though. Come the Falschemjäger. Enemy now has 
And the charging force, so it's a comet. And it's just making a bit of a push here. Well. Yeah, I'm disengaging, taking a lot of damage from these tank destroyers all of a sudden. is hanging on though, hanging on to those VPs, machine gun covering this one. I really haven't committed uh, too many resources to that left VP for quite some time now. Work the collider. Do have some commandos on the field now for Vodka Company. Placing one of his uh, lost infantry sections it looks like. from the 152 through the center but Raketten from the side connecting SU-85 not facing the center switching directions now and missing its first shot 152 going after the Raketten taking, taking some shots double Raketten's on the side fire flying some trouble Panzer 4 coming forwards Panzer 4 oh very very lucky on the move at that range getting the shot that was so lucky, Cal definitely should have chased in there after the super highly vetted Firefly. It's lucky though. That range on the move and penetrating too. Oof. It does free up a bit of a uh, pop cap space for Volca Company. It looks like he's Gonna go for a 17 pounder in the center. Interesting. There are still quite a lot of infantry support guns for the Axis. Big bombs coming down the East Supremacy through the center. These uh, infantry support guns not moving out of the way could be uh, in trouble. Ooh, two squads down there. Comet coming forwards, but ran over a mine and goes down to the King Tiger. was targeting but yeah that comet push did not go well chasing after the panzer 4 doesn't get the kill Fifty pound in the middle though Should keep the 152 pretty safe but yeah some big big casualties for vodka company See the axe with uh, much, much larger armies now. The enemy only have 50 points left. To drain out a few VPs, however. 17 pounder not quite facing up. Enemy Changing directions now. Should be some big damage onto the King Tiger. Yeah, he's like, oh boy, I don't want any more of that. Ah, one more shot on the exit, too, close to max range. That is a long repair time awaiting the King Tiger. The second squad Stern Pies even to try and speed up the repairs. Interesting. Made out. Oh, and the 152 Falsham may get in some trouble. Didn't make it out alive. Nexus camping at the moment. The Allies getting a bit low now. About to tick under 100. Especially at this rate. Oh, and there's a King Tiger on the other side of the map. Cal also getting a KT. Those big boys will be quite vulnerable. To the 17 pounder for it uh, faces the correct direction. Like that. Oh boy. P4 takes a big shot. Can it clear the arc in time? Oh, not quite. Didn't pop the blitz. I don't know if it was on cooldown or not, but doesn't get away right on the edge of the range. 17 pounder seals the deal. So here we go, 17 pounder already paid itself off. Looks like a pretty good choice. Let's just try to go for the capture again, looking for the triple cap. Stuka through the center, maybe go after the maxim. Oh, catches the retreating squad a little bit too. 17 pounder hammering away, already up to vet 2 after that. King Tiger has to back away. 
Oh, and look at that. Two shots very, very low after that. That's hard, man. 320 damage per shot. I fly on this side to contest the King Tiger over here. Sniper providing sight. Double kittens are there, though. Pushing forwards. My flies to be careful. Five two opening up. King Tiger coming forwards again. There we go. We're getting opening up. This one not quite in range. Commandos going in after the oh big shot on the guards. They nearly get wiped. But both of the kittens do get forced off. Oh, and that one decrewed. Like Gamma Bomb and the 152 connecting at the same time. Wow, a late, late, late howitzer for Cal. Very strange choice. Guess this trick gonna try to use it to siege out the 17 pounder. So if you can uh, make it work, we're getting, you know, both teams on very low amount of VPs. I don't need to get the chance for one or two barrages with it. Sometimes it's going to make it hard to justify artillery. Two I generally favor tanks for a more immediate impact. Whoa. It's going down in the center, and there we are. LFH is barraging the 17 pounder. Slowly softening it up. Stuka coming down. A lot of machine guns through here. After chasing in after the uh, SU-85, takes some big damage. Oh, clears the arc of the 17-pounder in time. Now going after the Katusha, 17-pounder switching directions. Takes that down, 17-pounder. Oh, oh no, the Firefly from the side does the trick. Still a decent one, took down a VET-3 uh, SU-85. Wow. Oh. Nice throw in the towel with that push. Interesting. Would he disconnect? Don't know. Was it was it really over? What is that? Uh, I don't I don't know. But either way, uh, GG. Good work by the Axis hanging in there, man. They had a tough go early game, both of them going for battle group and uh, investing into the infantry support guns and they just had no map control for such a, an extended period of time but finding that Katusha kill over here that Raketan just running forwards all the way and knocking it out was a huge deal it allowed these infantry support guns to be relevant in the entire game this one up to a VET 5 also allowed the double Raketans to be very very effective for the Axis team throughout the entire match. And that's what allowed them back in the game. And 17 pounder was a pretty good idea, you know, did some good work, took down the Panzer forward, hidden hard against the King Tiger through the center, but not enough. And uh, I don't know, GG, well played. We'll just uh, sign off like that. Well guys, if you like your game to be cast by me, details are in the video description below. Otherwise, I'll catch you off to the next thrilling installment. Goodbye, and good luck.